Right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a, uh, oops, I don't know. To me, this is an exciting video, although it might turn into two videos. Um, so what I'm gonna be talking about today is the fact that I'm going to the World Championships of Warhammer next weekend in Atlanta. Um, so I qualified for this by winning the Grunhammer GT in August in Baltimore, which was like 15 people. So <laughs> it kind of feels like cheating, but heck if I'm going to not go since I qualified. Um, and I've said before on this channel, you know, I did, I did beat a couple people who were good. It's not like I just you know, randomly skipped my way in here. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my preparation I've been doing for the event, uh, my list, all that good stuff. And then, um, I'll talk about the format of the tournament a little bit and um, go through my group, explain what that means <laughs> as well soon. Um, so one of the things about uh, this world championship, I'll just call it WCW, that's shorter, um, is that in addition to their, you know, we're, we're all going to get individual prizes, you know, if there's the best overall, there's best general, there's best painting, et cetera. Um, and in addition to that, any like any placing you do also counts for country points for your country. So there is going to be like country medals at the end, um, and to uh, even out, you know, account for the fact that there's like 40 people from the U.S. and 45 people from the rest of the world um, ish. There's about 85 people, 87 maybe. Um, only the five highest placings uh, from your country count towards your country points, and like you can't double up on people um, unless you have less than five people from your country there. Which I think you know, there there's I think plenty that do have less than five. Um, some even only have one person going. Like I think there's one person from the Philippines. If I'm remembering right. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of countries that only have two or three people representing them as well, like China, Norway, Poland, I think, you know, Scotland. These all have less than five people. Um, U.S. is pretty much the big one that they're just like, <laughs> U.S. can't auto win because, you know, we have 40 people. Um, I think England has like a half dozen. France has maybe 10. Um, so, you know, mostly half U.S., then largely European, and then a bit of worldwide representation, which is great. And hopefully that will expand next year. Um, so anyway, the point of all of that is, um, you know, this is going to be like, somebody said in AOS Coach Discord, this is like a who's who of competitive Warhammer around the world, and then a few randos. And I'm like, hi, hi, that's me. <laughs> I'm the rando. Um, so I'm going into this without any real expectation of, um, you know, winning best general or something like that. Like, let's, let's be real. That's not going to happen. Um, I would like to win, you know, I'd like to win like half my games. I think that's, that's doable maybe. Um, but the moral of the story, I decided to bring my cruel boys, um, because I think I have a much better chance at winning best painted, um, than I do at winning best general. Um, and my cruel boys are my favorite best painted army. Um, just this weekend, I was playing in a one day RTT in Westminster um, at Tables and Towers once again. Um, and I won best painted model. I put my sledge raker in. Um, so that's awesome. Um, I just want to say that community over there is awesome. Um, everybody there who plays is super nice. If you're in the area, you got to come out and play there at some point uh, in a tournament. Um, I think the I think I mentioned before the next GT there is next May, I believe. It's the biggest duckus. Um, but anyway, yeah, everyone there is super nice. Um, yeah, so um, I'm taking the Cruel Boys. I had played them at a GT, um, again, at Tables and Towers um, a month ago uh, in October. And that one, I just pretty much took everything I had painted. And it was like, let's see how this list works. Um, so it was, well, I won't go through the whole list. But the moral of the story is that was like largely, I wanted to play GT with them and see if they felt good enough to actually bring to a WCW because I hadn't played in a GT. This was my first tournament with the Cruel Boys. 
Um, so if it went completely horribly and it felt terrible and it didn't feel like I could have won any of the games, even if I played better and stuff like that, like I wasn't going to bring the crew boys, even though I like the way they're painted. So um, played in that tournament. I went two and three, I think. Yeah, I went two and three at that GT. Um, but all of my losses felt like there was room for me to play better and have them either be closer or actually win the games. So like playing that GT, I was like, I probably could have won four of these games instead of two if I didn't suck and I played better and I made a slightly better better list. Um, so so yeah, I committed. I was like, I'm going to bring the cool boys to this. Um, so I've gotten in in the last week. Um, it is currently Sunday, by the way, before uh, the tournament, before WCW. So I'm flying down to Atlanta on Wednesday evening and then... There's games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, but anyway, so I've been trying to get practice games in with the Cruel Boys. I played um, my friend Nick G with his Zinch, which he's just learning. Um, so it was very much a learning game with him. Uh, but I got a game in against his Zinch. I got a game in against my friend Nick Jackson's Ogres um, with one of the more recently meta, like Meat Fist type lists with a Frost Lord, an Iron Blaster, and then Foot Ogres. Um, that was awesome. That 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 list seems real good. <laughs> I lost that game, um, and it was it was good to have that experience and kind of see what that army does. Um, and then I did this one day tournament. I signed up for that and figured that would be a good way to get three games to practice in before um, WCW. So the things the, the things I changed in my list from that GT to now, uh, I'm still grading blades, crew boys. I kept crump them all. And about 20 minutes after lists were due for WCW, I like changed my mind and I want that to be WOG, <laughs> but it's too late now. Um, Crump them all is have less than three enemy units left alive at the end of the game. Um, and WOG is just have a battle line or your general in the enemy territory at the end of the game. Uh, and I feel like WOG, because of, because of my list where I have two Hobgrat Slitter units, um, instead of like Jacob's list, he only, have, he only has one. I have room for one of them to be screen and then like super sneaky one of them just into a back corner at the beginning of the game and have them at the end of the game run over and just secure three points for the grand strat and say like, you know, there's plenty of armies that don't want to spend a bunch of resources to chase down an 80 point unit in the back corner with like a big hammer or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I can just, I can think of lists where like you don't want to be wasting a unit to go over there and get them. But anyway, I have crumple them all. Um, the things I changed, um, I took out the My Brute Trogoth um, guy. Uh, he just didn't do anything in the GT. He's too slow. Um, so I took him out. I took out the Suffocating Grave Tide, and I added in. Um, what did I add in? I added in 10 more Gut Rippers. So I've been painting Gut Rippers furiously for the last two weeks. Um, so I have a unit of 20 now and a unit of 10. Um, and I, let's see, I still have six and three bolt boys. I still have the kill bow. Ah, right. I added in um, a third shaman. Um, so instead of my brute, I have a third shaman. Um, since that seemed strong, uh, so now I have a shaman with choking mist, a shaman with blizzard, and a shaman with sticky miasma. I thought about double blizzard. Um, and I, I just ceded to the wisdom of Jacob, and this is his setup on his shamans. Um, and it was helpful once or twice to have a shaman, you know, not just Gobsprack, who could cast Sneaky Miasma on like the Sledge Raker or on Gobsprack. Because um, you can imagine, you know, the shaman cast um, Sneaky Miasma on Gobsprack to move him 14 inches, and then he could use like two of the shorter 12 inch range spells from the lore. Um, in the same turn instead of having to move himself. So so that did seem like a good good choice. Um, I was very conflicted on Artifact of Power. I have Beast Kill a Slop because um, I've been liking throwing an Elixir for plus one save and Mystic Shield for plus one save on the kill boss to go to a one up and then you know, I'll let defense or minus tower to go to a zero up and just like throwing him to pin something. And if the thing I'm trying to pin is a monster, um, or even if I'm sending him in, because I've been a little better lately about not just chucking him forward at the very beginning, but holding him back a little bit. 
Um, if I'm throwing him forward into a monster, uh, I was like, eh, it might be useful to just do D6 mortals to the monster. And, you know, once once in the tournament, I'll probably roll that six for two D6 mortals and it'll be hilarious. Uh, and I'll be so happy. <laughs> so I did that. Um, this was the other thing after, you know, 20 minutes after list to redo, I said, you know, I should have just gone for the Arcane Tome on him because, um, you know, if he's throwing, if I'm throwing him into something, like I can just cast Arcane Bolt and do D3 mortals against anything instead of D6 that's only against a monster and might fail on a one and do nothing. Obviously, you know, people can dispel Arcane Bolt, but that's probably not their priority to dispel when I have Choking Mist and Summit Bogging Mist and spells that are way better. But as I said, I'm committed now. So I have the Beast Kill slot for the memes. Uh, I did, so in the tournament uh, yesterday, on Saturday, I did get to use it in two games. Um, which was more than I expected. So I chucked it on a Bloodthirster in my second game, and I chucked it on a um, whatever, a, a Tuskhorn or a or a, a Stonehorn or a whatever Tusk um, over thing in game three. Um, which I was very sad. I only rolled one mortal wound. If I whatever, if I had rolled like three mortal wounds on that, the game could have been a little different. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, kill boss, three shamans, snatch a boss on Sledge Rigger Beast, which you absolutely have to have, Gobsprack, which you absolutely have to have right now, because they're both amazing. Um, 20 Gut Rippers, 10 Gut Rippers, 2x10 Slitters, um, the kill bow, and 9 full boys into units. So this is a 6 drop. Um, someone on AOS Coach Discord has been making some fun, like, little... Um, charts of the the lists and things and keeps listing me as five drops um but i'm not is it right up here six drops i think they're just seeing acolyte battalion two battle regiments and going ah that's five but uh because the kill boss is 10 wounds he can't go in either of the battle regiments so he's the sixth drop um so anybody listening who who saw those charts the charts are all um yeah, so this list, um, as I said, I beat Nick Zinch in a practice game, but he is very new to Zinch, um, so let's not count that too high. Um, I lost to Nick's Ogres because, first of all, he, he played well and his list is good, and also I was just being real derpy. <laughs> just like, I don't know, I just kind of forgot Ogres did like Mortal Wounds on the charge or something. I don't know, I was being real dumb. Um, and then at the tournament this weekend, I played three games. Uh, the first one, I, I went 2-1. Uh, so my first game, I had a mirror matchup in like every way possible. I was playing another person named Ricky. I was play, he was playing Cruel Boys. He works at NASA. I do astronomy things. Like It was very strange. <laughs> so he had a very similar list to me, but with um, 12 Volt Boys, 3x10, Gut Rippers, and um, no Hopgrots, I don't think. Uh, he was very new to the army, though, and newer to AOS. Um, so again, it was kind of a learning game for him and I, I won. Um, so he was kind of learning the matchup and although I hadn't played the, the mirror, I like, I played enough core boys. I kind of knew the things to do in the mirror matchup, like stay 17 inches away from the bolt boys so they can't treat me <laughs> advanced, advanced strategies. Um, he was a super good guy. Good to play him. And it's always fun to see core boys players. Um, second game was against Cody Diaz, um, one of the Knights of the Pond, who is just an awesome dude and helps them with like paint judging and stuff and running tournaments. Um, so he was playing Corn and was just playing a total fun meme list with Corn with three of the Boom Thirsters, so the Blood Thirsters that if they do sixes to wounds, just do an aura of like four mortal wounds to everything in twelve inches. Um, and against me, um, sorry, so he had the three Bloodthirsters. Um, oh god, I'm blanking. Special character Bloodthirster, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, the Scar Brand, there we go. Um, and then just like a unit of Flesh Hounds, unit of three um, Skull Crushers, and like a couple Reaper units, and a couple Priests. But it was all about the Bloodthirsters. And, you know, he sent the one into me. He didn't roll any booms. I killed that one. The rest of them came up. I think he got one boom off. So he did like four mortals to a bunch of stuff, which like didn't really kill anything. Um, Cause I was keeping 
the vault boy is far enough back to be out of the out of range. And then the next turn I killed all of the bloodthirsters that were left. So that was pretty much the game. Like he went in, he didn't he didn't do the thing. He didn't roll sixes to wound, he didn't boom. Um and I killed everything. Because it turns out my army is pretty good against corn, I think, in my in my theorizing and my experience, I think it's good against corn. So that was not a representative meta corn army, but at least it was practice. Uh, and then third game I played against um, all stone horns, so it was like six stone horns and frost tusks. I don't, I don't know what these monsters are called. It was six, it was just six of the big monsters <laughs> in ogres, uh, and it was a super close game. I lost twenty five to twenty two. Um, I messed up a couple things that could have flipped it, and there were like there were a couple dice rolls that if they had gone the other way could have could have flipped it. Um, like I, I missed a re-rollable, um, missed a re-rollable eight charge that I needed both to get two more points that round for one or a second objective and more, and then because I failed it, he also got into Gobsprack, and it was just like, you know, it was a big risk, but like I, I couldn't really have done. I don't think I could have done anything better um, to mitigate that risk. I just needed to make that charge, um, and I didn't, and. Um, I also messed up last turn when we were like rushing. They, they, they were playing, sorry, they were playing two hour forty five minute rounds, so we were a little rushed. Um, we like we finished turn three. We kind of rushed through actually doing turn four, and then talked through um, turn five. And um, that's the other thing that was very unlucky that game is he took first, and then I never got the double, so I never won a priority roll that game, which was very sad. It made me very sad. Um, but the thing I messed up last turn is when we were talking through it, um, I was thinking I was going to need to do surround and destroy last turn, so I was setting up for that. But I had a sledge raker in combat with his last stone horn. I'd killed five and he had one left. Um talking out, we were like, yep, he would he would kill the sledge raker, and then we go into the last turn. He was just gonna like go stand on the point. To take it back the middle point to take it back for me it was um spring the trap so three so he was going to go take the point back and like get a tactic um because he had intimidate left he he, had, he did intimidate with his one model that was left um etc so like i was set up i was setting up to do surround and destroy forgetting that i could have tried reprisal which probably would have been a better call um so i could have done reprisal that turn um, I also messed up one thing where I retreated two units away from a Stonehorn that I needed to kill, which let him redeploy, which was just incredibly stupid. I was trying to screen out the other Stonehorns he had left, and it was it was dumb. Uh, that that kind of also ruined my plan. That lost me a tactic that turn because my units had to get far enough away from each other that I couldn't call the Cruel Boys Wog to activate them at the same time. So one of his Stonehorns got to go and did enough wounds to deny me the do ten wounds but not take two, ten wounds back battle tactic. So I messed up a bunch in that game. Um, and it was great to do it <laughs> at a one-day RTT instead of um, at WCW. So hopefully all of those mistakes will stick in my head, and I will not make them again. So that's the practice I've been doing. Let's actually talk about WCW. Um, so as I said, I think it's like yeah, 87 people from around the world, about 40 of which from the US. Um, so the way you got into this is tournaments. Um, TOs could apply to have their tournament be like a qualifying event for this. So I guess a bunch of, you know, I guess all the TOs in the US all applied for this and like people elsewhere didn't, or maybe we just have more tournaments. Um, but that I think that's how we ended up with so many people from the US. Um, there's 87 people. Um, the way the format is working is they split the 87 people up into four groups, so about 22 people per group. I think I'm in the one with 21. So um, there is a filler player. So nobody has a buy. They'll just play the filler player. Um, and within your group, so they're gonna, we're going to play two games Thursday when everyone's jet lagged in four hour rounds. So we have plenty of time. Uh, three games Friday. So five, uh, basically a five game GT in our group. And the top two from every group will go into the winner's bracket. So a double elimination bracket where they're going to play like five more games, five, seven more games potentially, um, Saturday, Sunday, uh, which will be exhausting. Um, and everybody else who's not in that winner's bracket has a much more relaxed schedule for the rest of the weekend. 
um, where we'll play two games Saturday and then one game on Sunday. And we'll be done in time to like spectate the final match and like all that stuff on Sunday. Um, so GW is building in a lot of like time to socialize and make friends with like people from the Warhammer community around the world, which is awesome. Um, no notes, it sounds good. Um, the battle plans have not been announced yet. We will get them when we check into the event. So whoever checks in first will probably share them on like Discord or something. Um, but since there's a max, you know, since theoretically there's a max of 12 games, depending on how that double elimination bracket goes, I hope, I assume, I don't know, I assume that we're just going to play every battle plan in the handbook. It would make sense. Um, so we might get to play like Towers in the Tundra that nobody ever puts in packs, uh, which would be fun. I've still never played it, <laughs> but I'll figure it out if I do. Um, right, so, so we got split up into four groups. We know our groups now. Um, I want to give props to whoever their username is Polish dude in AOS coach chat has been making these little like charts. Um, so this is the chart for my group. You can see here's, well, I can't highlight this because it's just a picture. Uh, at the top, it's split out. This is the people from the US and the people from outside the US. Um, the split is important to me because within the pools, um, so for the pairings every round, uh, they're going to try to not pair people from the same country against each other. So like first round, you know, first round, nobody from the US, we're, we're not going to have to play each other. First round, we'll play everybody else. Uh, second round, if there's like two US players, whatever, sorry, there's five US players who are 1-0 and five around the world players who are 1-0. Then again, they'll try and match the, the people from the US with people from not the US. So it's it's going to... They're trying to have us not play people we play all the time and also play the people from other countries because this is kind of pseudo, you know, a country competitive thing. Um, that's good because I have played one, two, I guess I've only played two people on this list from the US. Um, but um, so Christopher Goslin, Ted Adams, myself, and Scooter, Nicholas Waters. Uh, Walters, that's Scooter. Um, we all play at Tables and Towers all the time. <laughs> so there's four of us from the same store um, in the same group, which is kind of a bummer. But at least for Scooter, uh, him and Caleb, his brother, did not get put in the same group because they were there on Saturday and they they had to play each other like second round on Saturday. They play each other all the time at tournaments up here because they're both winning too much. And then they're, you know, they're up in the three, four O's at GTs. They should just lose sometimes to other people. It would be polite, and then they wouldn't have to play each other. <laughs> um, right, so this is who's in my group. Um, uh, where is it? Here it is, right. So the faction breakdown is a little interesting for the tournament. So this is everybody, not just my group. Um, Korn with seven people, OBR with seven players, Seraphon with seven players, kind of expected. These are some top armies. Uh, not surprised to see all of them with a lot of representation. Gits with six as well. And Sylvaneth also have six. Um, get Sylvaneth, again, not that surprising. Pretty pretty good, pretty popular armies. Um, the surprise me was Skaven. There's six Skaven players. I have not played uh, I've not played against Skaven since playing Jacob Skaven in a basement like a year and a half ago. <laughs> uh, and there's been some changes that are gonna make this interesting. Um, so then going down the list, there's two Beasts, uh, two Suns players, four Big Wog. Big Wog is like pretty much at the top of the meta right now um, by stats. Two Daughters of Cain, only one Flesh Eater Quartz. And there's four Ideneth, four Iron Jaws, four KO. Me as the only Cruel Boy is. <laughs> I'm, the only, I'm the only one brave enough or stupid enough. Uh, three Lumineth. Night Hawn also only has one. Three Nurgle, four Ogres, uh, three Slaves. Or Soul Blight. I was a little surprised that was so low. Um, I guess the nerfs have worked a little bit, or people just got tired of pushing 180 zombies around. Um, two Stormcast. I was. I thought I remembered there was only one, but I guess there's two. And two's each. Um, I don't. I think I'm a little biased in thinking that's surprising, just because Caleb plays up near us, and my friend Nick is picking up Zinch, and they seem popular uh, in my area. So looking at this, I was like, all right. I feel like. I feel like OBR is actually a pretty decent match matchup for me, so that's good. 
I feel like Corn is a decent matchup for me, which I mentioned earlier. So there's you know 14 people out of the 87 already. Um, Gitz is also a pretty good matchup for me. Um, I, I didn't mention I did I played a um, uh, I played a practice game against my friend Jake D. Shout out to Jake. You always comment on my videos, uh, which big heart. Thank you. Well, um, so I played against, I, I had been like theory hammering that my list was all right against Gitz. Um, so it was good to get a practice game in against Jake um, and see that my theory hammering pretty much was it was decent, <laughs> played out the way I thought. So I'm, I'm feel okay, feeling okay against Gitz. Um, big Wog, I just have no idea. Uh, I, and I've still never played Daughters of Kame and I've still never played against Lumineth. I have had like, I've had like an elf free AOS existence somehow. I don't know how this has happened. Um, and then Stormcast, I haven't really seen the lists, but I, I've played so much Stormcast myself that I know how they work. Um, kind of the same with Slaves. Um, Ogres, I think, are a hard matchup for me. I have no idea about Nurgle. And then KO, I'm like, sweet, I'm grinning blades. I hope I face KO. <laughs> I don't know if people are taking more like Ender Nurgle or things, but I'm like, I can screen, I can screen things out and you cannot shoot me and then I'll, I'll just do Mortals to you back. I hope it'll go well. Uh, and then Zinch, Zinch, I think, is... Um, I mean, Caleb spanked me at the GT um, last month, and I think that's a hard matchup. Um, Soul Blight, I think, is a very hard matchup, so I was happy to not see many of them. Um, Night Haunt, I just do Mortals, so they're just all going to die, I think. Because <laughs> um, I don't care about Ethereal. Iron Shells I've played enough against that I know I have a chance. It's not an easy matchup. Um, no idea about Feck either. Suns, I think I just get stomped. Beasts I have a good matchup against, I think. And then the one I didn't mention... Ideneth, right? So Ideneth. I have not played against Ideneth, but the new like shark hotness seems real bad against me. Or, I mean, seems real bad for me. I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with 8, 9, 10 sharks. Um, so this was like, I saw, you know, this was the breakdown of the factions. I'm like, sweet. We'll see how my group ends up. And then in my group, I got zero corn in my group. I got zero gits in my group. And I'm just like, what is, ha oh, what is happening? Like my gits, I thought was a good matchup. Corn, I thought was a good matchup. None in my group. There were 13, 13 players between those two. And I randomed into a group that has none of them. So what I do have is three of the four Ideneth players, which is bad, I think, <laughs> for me. Um, I have Scooter with his Iron Jaws, who hopefully, you know, because we're both US, I won't have to play. Uh, four OBR, so I got four of the seven OBR in this group, and I got one, two, three of the seven Seraphon, and then I got fully half of the Skaven list, so there's three of the six Skaven are in my group, and they're all not from the US, so there's a very high chance I play the Skavens. Um, other than that, two Sylvaneth, uh, one Nurgle, one Lumineth, and that's me. Um, right, there's another Iron Jaws not from the US. One of the KO players, which I'm like, great, at least I got one of the KOs. Um, I said four OBR. So yeah, so this is my group. Um, you can see the people not from the US um, down here. Let's ignore these stats over here that, again, this is Polish dude on AOS coach chat putting this together. Um, so so I think what I'll do for the rest of this video for a little bit is I'll, I'll go through the lists for the non-US folks in my group who I am most likely to face. And that's probably going to take enough time that I'll end the video there. Um, and then maybe I'll come back and do another one um, tomorrow and just go through the, the US lists as well. Um, so yeah, I think that is my plan for the rest of this video. Uh, I already showed my list. We don't need that. So uh, the nice thing, um, so the lists are all up on BCP and uh, we can sort. So they like added to our names, our group, so we can sort through the lists here. So let's just see what we're up against. Uh, as I said, I'm going to skip USB for now. Um, so first up, Christopher with OBR. Um, 
I said before, I think I'm a decent matchup into OBR. So this is Archon, Catacros, so double more Arc, um, Leash, Kavalos, and an Os Effector. So that already tells me I'm going to see some more gas down here. Um, oh, I'm not. Wait, what? Oh, I'm not. OK. <laughs> so six and more discard. Two by five Death Riders and a Bone Type Nexus in not a one drop. Uh, so this four drops. It doesn't matter for me because I'm six. Yeah, four drops. Um, whew, this is super weird. I think I can beat this. I don't like this OBR list. Sorry, Christopher. Um, with the Oss Effector, I was expecting to. Am I blind? I was expecting to see like four Morgast Archai. Because the Oss Effector can buff up their rend or give them ignore first wound per phase, which are both amazing. Um, but I guess he's just using this. I mean, this isn't a bad choice. Um, the Cartouche gives plus one to wound within nine inches. Uh, show of superiority is every time enemy uses a command on a five up, they have to pay two. Pain in the ass. And Drain Vitality is like the best spell in the lore. It's minus one to hit, minus one to save to a unit. Um, I'm not worried about that because he can't see me outside of 12 inches. And if his Ospector is 12 inches away from me, it's probably good for me. Um, he does have. I like 2x5 Death Riders. I love 2x5 Death Riders. Um, that opens up to, you know, he do the Death Rider tactic and he can do the Immortus Guard and Immortus Un, contesting an objective outside his deployment zone tactic. So he's got two book tactics he can do. And then it's just, I guess it's just uh, Catacros and whatnot running up with the Mortec, not Mortec, uh, Mortis Guard in a small little castle thing. Leech Kvalos gives plus one attack to something, so I assume that'll be the Mortis Guard. Um, I think this is actually a good matchup for me because, again, OBR is an army I've played a lot of myself. Um, I think this is good because I think I can prioritize killing the Death Riders first. Um, I do a lot of Mortal Wounds to get through saves, and Gobsprat can even turn off wards. He can only, so he can, you know, there's a spell that Archon can cast to give four up wards versus Mortals to something, but he can only do that to one unit. And if he does it to the Immortus Guard and I want to kill them, I can, well, okay, never mind, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, and he's Crematorians. I was about to say, I can't turn off his wards because he's an Myriad. But I am, this is, all right, I'm throwing it out there. This is a bad list. I don't know why. It, I mean, Crematorian's cool with Death Riders, but I'm going to be shooting them and it won't matter. Crematorian seems weird with a Mortis Guard. Um, so, so he's not low myriad, so I can turn off his words. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop analyzing this list. I think this is an okay matchup for me. Um, I think I can do enough Mortals to like burn through the Immortus Guard um, and just kill stuff. Um, I think I can kill the Death Riders with ranged stuff and then just focus down Little Castle and he's not going to have enough board presence and he's not going to be able to get through like all my screens and stuff. All right, so Christopher, I apologize, but I give you a thumbs down. I do, you know, I like he's doing something a little different, but uh, here's where the problems start. Probably Seraphon Christophe from France. Um, yep, Fangs of Sotek, Spellcasting Savant. Shock and surprise, he has a croak and a star master. He has a star seer, a star priest, and an afterlith bearer. Oh my god, stop me if you've seen this before. Two by five source guard, ten skinks, and two bastilodons. Um, I haven't played Seraphon with Crow Boys. I think it's going to be a very hard matchup. I believe Jacob considers it a very hard matchup. My cat, once again, is opening my door, and I don't want him to open my door. Um, Anyway, I think it's a hard matchup. Um, I I think the Bastilladons I'm okay into because I do so many mortals. I don't really care that they're a two up save. And also my little Nash Roof guy with a D skill of slap. This would be great. You know, throw him into a Bastilladon that has a couple wounds left after shooting and just check the slap on him and kill it. Um, Comet's Call sucks because it doesn't need line of sight. It's just pick units that are on the board. So he's going to be doing Comet's Call to me. Um, yeah, this will be a problem. 
Um, the dream, of course, is that I do disappearing act and pick up both of the Saurus Guard. And for some reason, he has left the, you know, like the slan only next to Saurus Guard and within 24 inches of my Bolt Boys turn one. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I can treat you and kill you first turn and, you know, disappearing act these guys and just, just kill him. Uh, it's anyone good enough to be here probably won't let me do that. One of the you know one of the other reasons I brought the cool boys they're very not meta and like Jacob plays them here in the U.S. and like I think is kind of inf infamously the best slash only good cool boys player <laughs> from like Nova and stuff so like people from Europe might not have played against cool boys and not really know what all they do and not like plan around excuse me um, not plan around like the dirty tricks and stuff so we'll see um, not much else to say about this it's a crow list with Blah, 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 all that nonsense. Um, doo, 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 US, Damien from France. Here's the first Skaven list. Let's see what we got. We got a Grey Seer, another Grey Seer. We got a Plague, Plague Priest. We have the new Warcry Warband, Warband guy. We have Thankwall and another Plague Priest. Um, oh, and he's two Braziers, two Projectors. Interesting. So that's a mix of the melee and weapons. So the projectors are like horde clearing. Um, Proceeders are I think combat hitty. Uh, and then two clan rat units, two units of 15 sensor bearers, which is the real punch of the list, I think. A unit of clan rats. Um, that's three units of clan rats, all right. And the rest of the Warcry war band and two warp grinders. I have the feeling I have the feeling that the two warp grinders are for the two by fifteen sensor bearers, and it's the whole three claw steps forward thing where like this basically gives you three or four chances I think to fish for the nine inch charge. Um, so you pop them down outside of nine inches, and then you like charge with something else. If you get more than a nine, you can just use that because of three claw steps forward. Um, if you don't, you can, I don't know if you reroll the first one to have, try and hit the nine, but then if you don't hit the nine there, you can always just try and roll the nine with the, the sensor bears. Um, board wide minus one to charge definitely puts more of a ink in that plan. Um, so that will be helpful. I think I will try and keep, uh, I'll try to remember to keep a shaman like outside of unbind range if I can to get that uh, down so that minus one to charge will help a lot. Um, I feel like I can probably kill Thankwall. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I just I don't have I don't have the experience against Skaven to really know. Um, I think I'll struggle in the matchup just because uh, I struggle against loss of bodies. So. So I was happy I have no Soul Blight in my group, but I think Skaven presents a lot of the same problem, where it's just, you know, this is 60 clan rats to chew through, and then some very hitty elite sensor bearers and a bunch of characters. Um, Jesus Christ, my cat is being just a complete turd. Um, all right, so that's first Skaven list in my group. Going down to Norway, up to Norway, I guess, Danny's OBR. Um, all right, Os Vector with almost the same setup, but this is Dark Acolytes. You can, um, the first spell from the lore you cast every turn, which will be Empower Not Array Weapons, um, cannot be unbound, so that's a free magic down as long as you don't like double ones it. Uh, then he has Leech Cavalos and Catacros, so lighter on the heroes in this one. Then he has five Death Riders, five Death Riders, three Immortus Guard, and there's the four Morgast Archai. Um, and. Harvester with no more tech, which is very strange. But um, this is much closer, I think, to a. This is, I think this is a, the better OBR list um, compared to what we saw. Um, just because you have the four Morgast Archai that are synergizing better with the Alpha Vectors. They are super fast and super killy, and you're going to be giving them plus one attack and powering them up, and they're just going to murder whatever they touch. They turn off commands. It's, it's, it's real nasty. Um, and then he still has the three Immortus Guard for some bodyguarding onto the characters. This is it's very similar to what I like to run, but I don't run Ketacros because I don't own the model. Um, but I 
I think the three Immortus Guard is enough if you're bodyguard, just you know, to have them around for some bodyguard wounds. Um, Harvester is questionable, I guess, maybe without like more tech guard, but it is a monster. You can stomp and roar, um, and it does open up another tactic. So he does have um, this does have three available tactics from the book. So you can you can do the kill something with Harvester, you can do charging with those, and you can do escorting the Mortathon. Um, so this is a good list. Um, I'm more scared of this one than the other OBR list, but I still think um, I think it's okay for me. It's, like I said, it, it's worse than the other one for me, but I think it's okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Who was that? That was right. That was Danny. All right, Australia. We got an Iron Gels list. I assume it's going to look like an Iron Gels list. We have a Maw Crusher, two War Chanters, a Weird Knob Shaman. This is all pretty standard. And then three by six score gruntos. So all the piggies and six brute ragers. So that is new. Um, I haven't faced brute ragers yet. Um, and usually most like scooters list, uh, most of the iron gels list I play are six, sorry, two by six gruntos and then like 10 brutes instead of three by six. This is a little different than what I normally play. Um, I think I think Iron Gels is just a straight skill matchup against my army, um, which, as I said before, <laughs> this is the World Championships of Warhammer. I assume everyone coming here is very good, so that probably doesn't bode super well for me. Um, but I've I've played Iron Gels with my list, so I know a couple more. I knew I know a couple things to do um, now that I didn't know when I when I first played against it. We'll see how it goes. Not going to give away all my strats. Um, US, US, Singapore with Ideneth. And this is all sharks. Great. Cool. It's an Achillean King who is hitty and scary. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sharks. Great. Cool. And a Leviathan. Oh boy. So fun. Um, I think this is just brutal for my list. I'll have to see how it plays out if I play against it, but it seems bad for me. <laughs> um, sure, he can't see me from outside 12, but he can just move. All of these things move like 14 inches. So he can just move into range and then murder things and then charge and murder more things. Um, and the IDK, um, their rule, they have an army rule where you can only shoot the closest thing that you are eligible to target. So the difficulty I see is that maybe it won't be so bad. Um, I think ordering my shooting is going to be important because, like, I don't want to get. Yeah, I could I could see a scenario where like I shoot the kill bow and the unit of three bolt boys at one alapex that's closest to me and leave it on like one wound. And then the unit of six bolt boys can only shoot that Alapex for only doing one wound. And like that's gonna be brutal. And like I won't be able to split shots with the um with the big unit of bolt boys, which is nice to do sometimes, especially at close range when you have like 13 shots. Um so I see this being difficult for me. Um maybe it'll be okay. I think maybe I I think I definitely err on the side of shooting the six bolt boys first and just trying to blow one up completely so then I can target another with um with the other bolt boys and the killabo. And then I think it's just gonna be a matter of I mean, this is true for any army. Does you do you run out of army before the other person runs out of army? Um, but I think it's gonna be just how fast can I kill sharks? And do I kill the sharks faster than he kills me? So it's going to be a big, big, big screening game for me to keep the shooting off of like my bolt boys and important things. Um, I think it does help is all of the sharks. They're not monsters and they're not heroes, so they will all be at minus one to hit um, gut rippers in combat. So if he does try and come into combat, um, that will help a little bit. He can still probably murder him pretty fast. Um, and then he is Let's see one battle regiment. Oh, he can only have one battle regiment because he only has one character. So that so how many drops is this? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, he still outdrops me. It's five drops. That's sad. <laughs> I thought there was a chance. I thought there was a shot that I could could outdrop him. All right, 
So there's that. Uh, another Skaven from France is up next. Let me just scroll down. Uh, so next Skaven from France. This is a Gray Seer um, with all of the GHB spells. Gray Seer with Levitate. Thankwell with four Warp Fire Projectors. I'm surprised to see two Thankwells. I thought Thankwell was like out of favor and not the Meta Skaven thing to do. Um, so this surprises me a little bit. That he's got Skavik, the Warcry guy. I didn't mention what he does earlier. He, um, what is it? I don't know if it's a spell or a prayer or just an ability, but he can basically like curse an objective so that if his little dudes, um, the Plague Pack, are contesting it, enemy can't contest it. But they don't seem very tough. So I think I just kill him and then it's fine. Anyway. There's also a Claw Lord and a Warlock Bombardier. So this is a very mixed list. Um, Jesus Christ. Maybe I should edit that out. My guess. Just such a turd. Um, anyway, so there's the characters. 3 by 20 Clan Rats. Only 1 by 15 Plague Sensor Bearers with a Warp Grinder. So again, I assume they're going with the Warp Grinder. Then this has a Doom Wheel and a Hell Pit Abomination. I think I need to. I think I'm gonna need to focus down the Hell Pit Abomination. Those things scare me. I've heard horror stories. Doom Wheel, kind of annoying, but I don't think amazing against me. Um, the novels. I forgot to mention. I I might just park a. Um, I might just park like a Hopgrat unit next to the novels if I can, um, just to stop anything from coming out of them. Um, and then this is at least. This is a bunch of drops. Ah, yeah, it says down here. 14 drops. So that's nice. I get to outdrop somebody with my six drops. Hooray. Um, so that's great. Um, again, I think I, I think Skaven is a little bit rough for me. Um, but I don't think this is the Skaven list I'm most scared of. Um, I, I think it's going to be hilarious when I just like charge a Nash Doof into Tankwall and he does like two mortal wounds to me. I'm like, cool, I don't care because I'm a single model. And then I like chuck beast kill slop on him and just murder him <laughs> i don't know we'll see i have, I have high hopes of my nash tube killing and call at some point um right that was leo um macram from china sorry if i'm butchering names here with seraphon <gasps> shock and surprise it is fangs of sotek his grand strat is magic made manifest which is harder um he needs, I think that's he needs one of the three endless. He might even need two of the endless spells on the board at the end of the game. That's a questionable grand strat decision, but cool. We'll roll with it. Um, but he's got two star seers, um, star master, croak, astralis, bear, star priest. Again, so surprising. Shocks. Um, two by five source guard, three by ten skinks. That is it. He's got the Realm Shaper engine. Ah, the Realm Shaper engine is going to be annoying. I didn't think about this before. <laughs> this is a rough matchup. This is going to be annoying because I'm going to want to do the tactic where I have where my whole army has to be within three of terrain, and he's going to do this, and he's just going to kill everything that's near terrain. So that kind of take that almost takes a tactic off the table for me. Just this being on the board. So maybe I try and get Gobs Rack back to smash it at some point. See, um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's just super heavy on the casting, light on anything else, and he's going to be summoning things. Um, it doesn't have the Bastilla Dots like the other list. Um, I think it's kind of the same thing where I'm like, I hope he doesn't realize I can maybe pick up the Soros Guard for first turn, and then I take first turn, and I'm like, shoot, you're slaying off. Um, hope he doesn't watch this video. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, then we got more US people, do do do, and then Sylvaneth from England. I was happy to see this list. Um, this is Arch Revenant, Hilariel. Interesting. I think she can summon a Tree Lord. Never faced her, but that's 820 points. That's a lot of points. Uh, and I know she can come back to life once. Uh, then it's just five Tree Revenants, Revenants, and nine Karnath Hunters with Great Bows. Have fun not being able to shoot anything in my army and not doing anything against me. I think this will be great. <laughs> I think this will be a good good matchup for me. Um, 
then he has five Gossamer archers, which cool. I don't know. Maybe that'll be the first thing I shoot off. I don't know. Um, I don't see how this kills me because if he's within 12 inches of me with these guys, I think he has problems. And I don't think Alarial and like the tree lord she summons are going to kill me on their own. So I hope for there. Uh, US, 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 US. All right, England and Poland. One more Skaven list. This is the one I'm scared of, I think. Um, this is the one which I think is more the current meta Skaven list. Um, thanks to Iron Gutsman. Um, mad if people steal his list and it gets nerfed. So I'm saying it on Coach Discord. <laughs> Not just making it up. Um, so this is three Grey Seers on Screaming Bell. Plague Priest on Plague Furnace. Another Plague Priest. Again, the Warcry guy, which I don't know. Everybody's taking it. I guess it's good. Uh, then 40 Clan Rats. 2x15 Plague Sensor Bearers. Oh, he has a Soul Scream Bridge. That's interesting. I didn't notice that before. The first time I looked at this list. Spoiler alert. I looked at these lists once already. Uh, with Command Entourage for an extra spell and that arrangement. So he is six drops. So that hey, it actually matters what the tech defender role is here. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this, honestly, if I play it. The Screaming Bells can push themselves now. They're really good. They're like 15 wounds, I think. Um, and they can bodyguard onto the clan rats. And the other annoying thing is maybe even the main thing. So the bell does a few things. Um, I won't go through here, but once they have, once the bell has seven or more wounds on it, the grace here can crack the bell and summon a vermin lord. <laughs> On a one, it'll blow up. It'll just blow up the the bell. But um, so yeah, you like put some effort into killing this, and you don't quite kill it, and he just breaks the bell and summons a three hundred point vermin lord. And it's like cool, good job. <laughs> and the bell, you know, and on anything but the one, the, the bell is still there. It just can't use the bell power. Um, so that seems like a pain in the ass to deal with with three of them. Um, it feels like you either have to just kind of feels like you have to kill it in one go, so we can't summon a Vermin Lord. Um, and maybe that means, like, I try to chip a couple wounds off of all of them and play play a real sweaty math game of, like, can I do five wounds to each of these and then kill them next turn? Um, then, of course, you also have to deal with... God, I, don't know how I, I don't know how I deal with this list, honestly. This is... The Plague Sensor Barriers are disgusting in combat. They just do so many wounds. Um, they're not that hard to kill, especially from range. Um, you do have minus one to wound in melee. Um, he doesn't have any warp grinders, but he does have the soul screen bridge for, I assume, throwing like a bell or plague sensor bears through, probably plague sensor bears, and trying to charge. At least I have the chance to dispel that. And I at least also have, um, Again, the minus one to charge board wide. Um, so I have some I have some thoughts and hopes on how to deal with this, but I don't know how I play the objective game against it really, um, which is obviously a problem. I know I know I know they don't have great book tactics, so maybe that's the saving grace here. Anyway, I think that's that's a scary escaping list. And then last but not least, Victor from Poland. At some point, I think I forgot to say people's names. That was Tom from England, uh, Simon with England, Skaven, whatever, you can read. Um, last up is Victor from Poland with KO, and I'm, I'm just so happy to see this because <laughs> it is the older style KO that I think is not that good anymore because it's gotten nerfed enough. Just an admiral, a chemist with the soul screen bridge in a bottle, and another chemist. Oh, and it doesn't have a navigator. Oh, this makes me so happy. I love this list. It doesn't have a navigator in it. Because, oh, I hate that model. Hate navigators. It should be 200 points. <laughs> anyway, and then it's 30 thunders. Woo! And an ironclad and a gun hauler. Um, oh, that's what's. Yeah, that's weird. I usually see a navigator and not a gun hauler. Like maybe one other thing. That would be one seventy. Yeah, if you took this out, you'd have two hundred points. Um, I feel like I usually saw like navigator and something else. 
So let's just, um, is it a battle regiment? Is it a one drop? It is a one drop, whatever, I don't care. Um, I just set up my screens. I probably super sneaky something so that if he moves away from, I don't know, whatever. This is, I think I'm fine against this because he can't see me outside of 12 inches. And if he drops 30 thunders within 12 inches of my screen, then things I'm screening will just kill him. And I'll be like, great. Um, I'm not going to talk more about this because KO is dumb and I hate them. <laughs> Especially that. But I was, I'm happier to see that um, brand of KO um, for my matchup um, than like the Ender Riggers um, list that I think is better. So, yeah, anyway, that is the preview of the non US stuff in my group. I'm going to break for just a moment and see if I have more time or if dinner is ready. Uh, if dinner's ready, I will do a second video and talk about US um, people in my group and a little bit more just about the tournament and stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening. I hope this was a fun little preview of what my uh, Thursday, Friday is going to look like this week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if I don't come back um, after a pause, then I'll see you in the next video.